صلی اللہ رسول کریم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم بردی راو بابر صاحب علامنائی جن صاحب جن زفر صاحب ڈاکٹر قدیس بٹ صاحب تائش شہزاد صاحب این مائی ڈیئر فرینڈ ڈاکٹر فاق اینڈ آور پلاسٹک سرجری کلیگ ریسٹ آف دا فیکلٹی ممبر فیسلیٹیٹرس and particularly the participants. Very warm welcome from Raval Pindi Medical University sites. I will stay brief because, uh, you know, um, although Vice Chancellor can't stay um, brief because this is this is the skin of the skin, the Vice Chancellor is always working on the work of the skin. So, but I think uh, I will make two points here. One, I am very thankful to the team uh, selecting Raval Pindi Medical University as a forum uh, for this August meeting. And not only this meeting, I'm really obliged over three and four years, uh, this has become a part of the team of Ravalapati Medical University. And let me say that universities uh, are the basically launching pad for everything. They are public sectors forum where anybody can use those facilities and those forums. And that's the VN of uh, administration of Ravalapati Medical University and team of university, that you can use these facilities, uh, you know, for uh, creation of knowledge and dissemination of knowledge. So that's the reason possibly but Saab and everybody feel comfortable, but all, all players is mine, all players is uh, university that you are here, and we really feel humbled and honored by your presence here, particularly uh, the faculty like this, which is world-renowned faculty here. And, uh, they are really the legends in the in dermatology. Secondly, I think uh, it's really unfair I have not mentioned, although I mentioned repeatedly, Dr. Bhatsam and Dr. Shivana. Dr. Bhatsam has worked here in Adamtology, I think up to, it is uh, going beyond the boundaries. And uh, really, uh, the presence of you, sir, putting the RMU uh, Dermatology Department on the world map. Thirdly, uh, the, regarding the participants, I think it is, a, it is a opportunity for the participants. The faculty like this, uh, uh, at least in 35 years of my experience, I have not seen the coherent team of uh, dermatology. And particularly, uh, Professor Rao, uh, I usually take pride that I have a lot of work. I don't give myself, but people tell me. But I am an admirer at the time uh, he has, uh, you know, uh, what time he sleep and what commitment he has. It is outclass. And this is one reason that this dermatology department is uh, progressing and I am not, um, uh, you know, forget to mention uh, plastic surgery departments. So I think if I have one thing to ask, sir, that this university is going fast track, so it is a winning team. And luckily this winning team stay with us and I am luckily, the, uh, you know, rather I feel really humbled to my team comes so. So thank you once again and I wish a great success and uh, once again I am thankful. Thank, thank, you, thank you, thank you. Some other you know, uh, departments be here. I think, uh, and obviously Hasnan, uh, who runs plastic surgery burn center in, in Pindi, one good story is if any of you uh, have a skin cancer, basal cell, squamous cell melanoma, where you want a most surgery. So now we, we did a workshop. We basically, we have a pathologist who knows how to prepare those sections. They can look at it and he can close it and his fellow will be cutting it. Okay, more surgery of waha pe possible hai um, in Holy Family. So find cases and <laughs> send, send it to him so he can do more surgery. Uh, in reference to BBH se kitne bande hai hai, mere dermatology department hai wale. So good, thank you. So every week, Friday morning, New York time, we have a skin pathology session where we are signing live cases. So from uh, US, sir. From, from your department, your department, if you know any people, and they want to join, then they shoot us an email to Dr. Shwana and we'll connect uh, all of you. And you can sign cases with me. Usually it's very fast, because we have signed 100 cases, cases, but then some of them would discuss and talk and we slow down. So may anybody wants to join then, I'll give my email in that or contact Dr. Shwana, then they can, they, she can connect you all. Uh, then what I have, what we plan to do today, uh, that we will talk very casually about dermoscopy, ke how do we use it, or I use it, or our teams use it. Same lecture I'm delivering on 15th in Hawaii, which is winter meeting at AAD. Ki. So it'll be the same lecture with little modification. But basically, everybody who uses 
रिमेरस को उनके अपने पैटर्न हैं कि उसको कैसे यूज करना है एंड सम बॉडी सम पीपल जस्ट यूज लाइक द स्टार्ट के देखा उनको लगा गुड और बैड दे काट इट अदर पी डिफरेंट एल्गोरिज्म सो वी हैव अवर ओन एल्गोरिज्म दीज आर सम ऑफ माई एफिलियशन और मोस्ट ऑफ माई एफिलियशन सो आई एम प्रोफेसर एट कॉर्नैल एंड रटगर्स एंड देन आई एव माई ओन प्राइवेट प्रैक्टिस एंड आई डू सेवरल अदर थिंग्स ना ये जो जो नीव आए और मोल का सिचुएरियो इन इन अमेरिका वी मोस्ट बायोपसीज वी डू आर ऑन नीव आई एंड वेयर पीपल आर थिंकिंग के इफ दिस नीवस इज मेलानोमा और इट्स ए चेंजिंग मोल और एक्स्ट्रा बट दिस टर्म डिसप्लास्टिक नीव आई ओरिजिनली इट वॉज थार्ट टू बी अगर इफ नीवस इज कॉल डिसप्लास्टिक देन दिस मे प्रोग्रेस टू मेलानोमा but now uh, the data is clear that bina dysplastic nevi are benign no need to cut all of them but masla ye hai ke when you look at a dysplastic nevus clinically with naked eye it has all the features of melanoma irregular pigmentation asymmetry etc etc so then how do you separate that so that's where other tools come in such as dermoscopy uh this i talk so then once you get to dermoscopy then there are obviously i was saying many algorithms and it's up to you which one do you want to use uh but many of them are more for very really research papers kyunki jab when you are on a patient na hi aapke paas time hai na hi itni situation hai ki aap figure out karein ke 1.2 point 3 point so whatever method you use it has to be practical ke quickly ek 2 second mein you see the mole and you move on so what we started using uh, many 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 years ago we published this in many papers and uh, it works so basically ye pehle aap logo ne kahi ne lecture suna hua i'm going to change it little bit in a minute but basically the way i do it or my students fellows do it ke you will have a uh, uh, a common benign pattern or common known pattern in those cases you will not biopsy on the left side is i think i have a pointer pointer is yeah 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 so on this side basically if you see these patterns we say you don't need to biopsy on this side you see this pattern you biopsy and don't don't worry logon ko impress karne ke liye zaruri hai ki aapka ye pigmented basal hai ya pigmented no ma but for practical reason it doesn't make any difference agar aap soch rahe hain ki wo pigmented basal hai aur phir bhi biopsy karni hai agar melanoma hai phir bhi biopsy karni hai so if you are wrong about what it was it's okay as long as you biopsy it so the way i teach is ke try to learn ke isko biopsy karni hai ke nahi karni hai rather than ke ye kya hai because it really doesn't it's good education and but practically biopsy or not biopsy works better so then we quickly look at these cases so you can all say ke iski biopsy karni hai ke nahi karni hai no so easy ye isko net you call it a network reticular network pattern or koi feature nahi hai so we leave it alone so similarly iski biopsy karni hai ki nahi obviously karni hai and why ke isme itne sare feature hain ke multiple colors and scar like areas all those features basically you have to biopsy clinically this will look funky enough ke aap biopsy karenge you may not use dermoscopy but just to start the discussion uh you will biopsy so this one hon ki hoga biopsy or not biopsy <laughs> so so it obviously at so it's also dermoscopy this is what happens as you start things look even worse than clinical because you see more structure and everything you see so oh, oh, biopsy so but with time you start learning that this is an okay pattern so this one is here is called with peripheral globule so the ye jo globule hai na this is a pigment stuck in the epidermis with like nice nice nest which are still benign but there are very symmetrical and all around to isme inka ye jo pattern hai symmetrical peripheral globule usually it could be spitz nevus or one of those nevus but this pattern you can not you don't need to biopsy now biopsy or not biopsy and why 
because it has all these features arborizing vessel arborizing mean like tree branches like vessel theek hai and then it has a uh, pigmented globules it has many features of a basal cell so this one you will biopsy biopsy or not biopsy ठीक है मोस्टली मेजोरिटी सेइंग नो यस बिकॉज इसमें कोई एटिपिकल फीचर नहीं है और दिस पैटर्न इज कॉल्ड जस्ट ग्लाबुलर वेर यू सी ग्लाब्यूल्स एवरीवेयर सो टू डिफाइन ए मेलानोसिटिक लीजन अगर आप देखें और कहें एंड यू टेलिंग योर प्रोफेसर सर आई थिंक इट्स मेलानोसिटिक यू हैव टू आइदर फाइंड नेटवर्क और ग्लाब्यूल और कॉम्बिनेशन सो द मोमेंट यू फाइंड दैट यू नो के यू ऑन मेलानोसिटिक जोन सो देन यू लुक इन अनकॉमन फीचर विच यू आर टॉकिंग सो दिस वन इज ओके नो बाय आप सी हाउ अबाउट दिस वन इसमें स्केल है और कुछ और है वट आर दिस कॉल समबडी ओके आई डोंट ओके सो ये देखें तो इसमें बेसिकली हैव टू फीचर्स ये दिस कॉल डार्टेड वेसल ये सारी की सारी एंड देन इट हैज ए स्केल यूजली बेजल साइल मैला नोमा न्यू आई यू डोंट वरी अबाउट स्केल बट वेन यू स्टार्ट सींग स्केल ऑल दो एनी थिंग कैन हैव इट but you are more into actinic keratosis squamous cell those things so if you see dotted vessels and scale then you are thinking uh, squamous cell anybody have a question here okay to so, isme biopsy or not biopsy no biopsy good तो मैं आप डिड यू नोटिस के एव ईच स्लाइड आई एम राइटिंग दिस एबसेंस ऑफ एनी टिप सो वन इज यू फाइंड के इसके टिपिकल फीचर क्या है इसमें एज ए ग्लाबुलर पैटर्न है देन यू आल्सो नीड टू लुक आर देर एनी एब नॉर्मल फीचर जस्ट इन इन योर माइंड बट दिस इज ओके बायोप्सी और नॉट बायोप्सी क्यों बायोप्सी वाई डू यू वॉन्ट टू बायोप्सी Okay, so most biopsies which which we do in America are due to pigment variation. You see a patient, उसकी either central hyperpigmentation है या peripheral hyperpigmentation है or it's hypo pigmentation central or peripheral and it worries you at a beginner level. But it's just pigment alteration. It is just central little bit central hyperpigmentation, but it's in the middle. Ah, uh, iska isme. If you go here, the so one of the this is okay. Network is fine, but यहाँ पे पता नहीं लग रहा कि what is happening underneath. So if you cannot clearly see, then you biopsy. How about this one? Biopsy or no biopsy? Okay. Why biopsy? What is bad about this one? Okay, but. Let's look at these vessels. So, here the vessel. Then this patient has is older. And they are everywhere, in between. I don't. But what are these called? Here, the white and black little. Huh? Sorry. Regression? No, 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 no. These are something called. But keep thinking. This is a papule, raised, well demarcated, and it has these little uh, structures. So, let me explain. सो दीज आर कॉल सूडोहॉन्सिस जो के किस में होती है एस के में या सो पिगमेंट वाइज एस के कैन लुक रियली रियली वाइल्ड बट द वे यू विल डायग्नोज इज ऑबली देर दे कैन बी फ्लैट बट यूजली दे आर डी मार्क वेल डी मार्केटेड रेस्ट बट देन यू विल सी दिज कैराटीन सिस्ट स्टक हेयर एंड देयर कॉल सूडोहॉन्सिस तो इसमें आल दो पिगमेंट लुक्स वेरी वेरी सम बट देन इट हैज दिस क्लासिक फीचर ऑफ ए बेनाइन एस के so we, but i mean you can biopsy but i believe if you see these structures you don't biopsy but well, this one we will biopsy because it has everything this may irregular pigmentation multiple colors blue white veil so this is called blue white veil then obviously irregular pigmentation and multiple colors so the single most feature if a patient ask you okay, i'm going home what should i watch the single thing to watch is multiple colors if the lesion is picking more than one color that's when they need to come to you or go to a doctor to to check it so irritation kai dafa jaise skin ki irritation hoti hai mole can also irritate 
Sometimes they can get rough because of eczema, whatever, but much change in color usually is uh, significant. Blue white veil, what does signify? So blue white veil, Johanna, it signifies that there is basically right under the epidermis. In the dermis, there is little fibrosis. And usme then there is also some pigment incontinence. So there is a, like a scar-like area with pigment in, incontinence, meaning it regressed. So there was a, there was a lesion here, like this lesion here, which has regressed. That means uh, that could, that sometimes is considered a bad sign if you have a regressed lesion. But basically, fibrosis and pigment in the dermis. Mm -hmm. So. Biopsy or not biopsy, easy. Okay. So, no deal, no big deal. How about this one? These are the kind of difficult ones. Okay, old elderly patient, there are many of these, what do you do? So, let's go back to what we've been teach, learning, which is like, a, it has one, two, three, four, multiple colors. So, even if you don't know what it is, just based on multiple colors, you're going to biopsy it. But it may have other features such as uh, irregular dots and globules, but multiple colors will do it. So if we look at it, so multiple colors, irregular pigment network, asymmetric lesion is overall asymmetrical. So if you can't remember anything, multiple colors, you take it out. How about this one? So this is again a trickster. So again, multiple comedo like opening yeah, these black ones here and there like so this is all sk usually but sk multiple colors it doesn't apply there are situations where it is actually it has pseudo hansis, but actually it's a congenital nevus and obviously can look a little bit different but if you see multiple comedo like openings you sort of ignore it obviously will biopsy it has multiple colors it has almost this blue white veil like area it's asymmetrical pigmentation, so all of you will biopsy, not even a question. Okay, biopsy or not biopsy? The hair, usually I don't remove hair for dermoscopy photos, so, you know, hair is making it difficult, but who wants to say yes or no? Okay. So, isme, there is something we call it like a negative network, which where the network is not prominent. But you see here, like there is a network, but these are very thick lines instead of like thinner lines. And it has some color variegation, uh, light brown, dark, or at least two colors. This may come back benign, but ideally, if you cannot tell and it has does not have clear picture, you better off by opposite. So in this case, they did say they did, sit, did say they'll biopsy it. So this is difficult, but biopsy or not biopsy? Okay, so it has everything. Because when you see blue nevi, spitz nevi, hemangioma, sometimes you cannot see underneath what is happening. So you may have to biopsy, but this is a, a clear case. And there are these some new uh, features, not new, couple years. Some of the melanomas will have these white streaks and they usually come from fibrosis or some, some of them can get hyperkeratosis on the top. So, but it's multiple colors, already blue, white, gray veil, it already does it. Hanji. Biopsy or not biopsy? Okay, if you, if you don't know what to do, then biopsy it. If you, <laughs> okay, so this, <laughs> but if you know, you know. So it has what we call uh, irregular pigment network. So if you go to the periphery of the lesion, center mein toh, we cannot tell ke kya hai. And if you cannot tell kya hai, then you better biopsy. But when you go to the edges, so these little network, usually network, so what does, what are these vessels called? We just learned. Arborizing vessels. So we will biopsy, it's another basal cell feature. So this is on foot or hand. This blue part is the mark by my assistant, sorry. But the lesion is here, which you have just these straight lines. So, and are you, do you, 
So this is also a tendency throughout the world. Whenever you see a lesion on mucous membrane, hand, feet, everybody gets scared. Okay. But just deal them with like all other almonds. Most of them are benign. And most of them, according to literature, are benign or malignant. Usually they don't change into malignant. They're de novo if it's melanoma. So this one is, ben uh, this one let me actually go, no. So this is called a parallel furrow pattern. Just mean these lines, they, have, they are small furrows, thin lines. And the way we remember for our teach residents for, for the board, furrows are friendly and ridges are bad. So ridges are for melanoma. If it was melanoma, what will happen is you see the space in between these furrows, this whole thing will be black. So you'll see wide brown or black lines which are filled all filled here. And then those are called uh, crests. So this parallel furrow is a benign pattern. Remember, you'll see it whole day and just ignore it, don't cut them. What will happen, you may still have a little network going this way, just like you see network in normal lesion. So usually they're supposed to be furrows like this. They follow the sweat duct or those lines. But sometime you can have a network also, it's still benign. I, if you see these lines filled, then that's a melanoma pattern. How about this one, biopsy or not? Yes. Biopsy and why? So these are called spoke wheel. And where do you see spoke wheel? No. Guess another one. BCC. Okay. Spoke wheel pattern is like here. They're like a wheel or wires on a wheel. So anyway, so I'll take a little break. So basically the summary is if you see known benign pattern, which is network, globules, peripheral globules, then if you see pseudohonsis, and, um, and then some of them may have like uh, globules and network together, then you ignore it. If you see multiple colors, you see arboreal vessel, you see spoke wheel, you see dotted vessels, blue white veil then you're going to biopsy and really this works i have done experiments most of the dysplastic mole syndrome patients have about like hundreds of moles and there is no way you're going to do a calculation there it is this or that and then uh, somebody challenged me once like so what do you do if somebody have 170 200 legion i said i still look at all of them with the microscope how long would it take you so we did, we actually published it it took it takes maximum 12 minutes, even if you are looking at 200 moles. You may not look all of them, but we videotaped it, we recorded it, we did it. So you can do whole skin exam, even if you have to look at all lesion within 15 minutes, which is okay. Uh, but it takes only a few seconds, but you have to have, when you're looking at it, look with the a, with a, with a aim, okay, you're going to decide okay, biopsy or not biopsy, and then how will you convince your junior student or resident okay, why I'm not biopsying, you should know why I'm not biopsying. It has peripheral globule, network globule, this, 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 or why I'm not, then you should just know for yourself and should be able to tell other people. Anybody have a question? We'll talk inflammation a little bit. No questions? Okay. We will go to inflammation a little bit. So, sorry, I was supposed to stop. So, obviously, this lesion, because we know we are in inflammations, I can talk about is it eczema, psoriasis, lichen planus or not. But if you give me this lesion as it is, I wouldn't be tell, able to tell it's inflammatory. I'll be thinking a pigmented acrylic keratosis, that stuff. But if you know you're dealing with inflammation, then we have features. So, in this case, we'll not talk about uh, biopsy, we'll talk about what do we think it is diagnosis wise? So in this case, if it's an inflammation, let me give you first one. It has dietal vessel and punctate hemorrhages. So in eczema, you will see small dotted vessels and little hemorrhages. If you start looking at it, you'll start recognizing them. Uh, instead, if you have this one, this has scale, and then it has more blood vessel, which are more than prominent, very symmetrical. Anybody can guess what this may be? So this is psoriasis. So you can clearly, let's go back, eczema, psoriasis. So 
pretty easy once you start doing it. And in this one, you have numerous regularly distributed red dots and a silvery scale, which is psoriasis scale, this one. Eczema obviously can have a scale, but that scale is not this silvery, usually wet, crusty, oozy. There is more uh, fluid in it. And uh, these ones obviously have references where I'm talking from. Uh, so, how about this one? So it has also some scale, but also have some crusted areas, maybe a little bit dotted vessels. So basically, you cannot diagnose subacute or not on dermoscopy, but the bottom line rule is the same. You should be able to tell <coughs> lichen planus, lupus <coughs> together, but lichen planus, psoriasis, eczema, at least a rosacea we can tell. So this is an eczema, why eczema again, that it has in this case, easy has this yellow crust, but it also has some small dotted vessels, so eczema. Uh, how about this one? We are in inflammations. So what is the diagnosis? LP. And this is lichen planus. Obviously, now you can clearly tell lichen planus look 99% different than psoriasis. Clinically also, and dermoscopy, and it looks very different than uh, uh, eczema. So, white crossing lines. So, usually they're going like a scar on the skin. Okay, so this is on maybe somebody's face. What is the guess? Rosacea. So, rosacea depending what kind of rosacea you get. It can have telangiectasia and papules, but this one happened to be mostly telangiectatic. And these are called polygonal vessels, meaning they are making these little structures. Uh, but on the face, when you're looking at basal cells especially, those are usually older patients, they will have this telangiectasia or polygonal vessels outside the main lesion. So many lesions on the face, if patient is older and they have these vessels, you will may mix up with uh, basal cell, but basal cell vessels are different. Uh, but just keep that in mind. But these are called polygonal vessel, telangiectasia, rosacea. Anybody have a question up to this point? Usually it's hyperkeratosis with the with hypergranulosis. Thick thick epidermis with some hypergranulosis. That what does it, just that thick scale. Uh, so rosacea. Take a little minute. So here our aim was our first part was to tell biopsy or not biopsy, basal squamous melanoma, you take it out. And we did the features for benign, which are network, globules, extra. Second part was just try to just understand lichen planus and then uh, eczema and psoriasis. Rosacea has done. Sometime on the red face, we have a lot of people come with red face. Now, assumption everybody jumps on to is they have rosacea. First, treatment doesn't work. Then, okay, then maybe what do you do? So is it seboric dermatitis? versus lupus, versus eczema, versus this, so dermoscopy can help. So telangiectasia, so between rosacea, dermatitis, psoriasis, and, there's, and the treatment changes the moment it's rosacea versus septum or psoriasis. Okay, we are on to hair. I'm trying to teach whole book in hour, one hour. <laughs> so, it's on the scalp, it has some scale, so, if you want to guess, sorry, no, that's coming. So let's look at this. It's at greasy yellow scales and some vessels which are maybe just because of age, but see here, they look like basal cell-like vessel, but then there is a lot of this scale stuck to the hair follicle. So seboric drum, can you have eczema? There is yes. If there was psoriasis, you'll see dotted vessel, but sometimes you cannot separate septum from psoriasis. But this is septum. I don't do dermoscopy for septum because you can look at it and tell. But in a rare case, if you want to separate this from this, you maybe want to look at that. 
<coughs> how about this one? We did that before. So see, this can help. So on the scalp or on the forehead, you're trying to decide, is it this or this? Then this will definitely help. Okay. How about this one? Look like a scar. This is what? Like LPP, maybe, yeah, this could be, so there is little scarred like areas where hair is gone. In septum, usually you don't get, you know, hair loss. And then there is something stuck to the hair follicle here, so let's see. So it's called uh, perifollicular scaling. The scale is kind of right around the hair, hair opening. And then you have scar like areas. So this is like an uh, LPP basically. And this look like it snowed around here, no? Snowflakes around the, <laughs> around the hair follicle. How about this one? No Google, no cheating. <laughs> so, so this is important actually. So on the scalp, because so many times we do biopsies, even then we cannot attach LPP or lupus because it's scarred and it's fibrosing and now what do you do? But if you do dermoscopy, it may help. So like in planopolaris, we saw previously clearly has that peripheral scale and some you know scarring like area. But in early discoid LE or LE, you can have this uh, usually like uh, blood vessels around the hair follicles. So right here you see this bird, and this is clearly different than LPP. So LPP and DLE or LE is kind of major dilemma histologically and clinically, but if you use dermoscopy, it may help and solve the mystery. But if this DLE was chronic long standing, then you may not see this. That also turns into scar eventually. Uh, anybody have a question? Okay. How about this one? This is easy. Alopecia areata. Everybody knows that. So again, this is like we call it exclamation mark, which is thinner at the bottom here because inflammation is hitting the root and it's skinnier. So it is really, now it's good that in the scalp you can use a dermatoscope, areata versus LPP versus DLE versus abdomen versus psoriasis. So scalp salt. And Hasanan, maybe you can use that too. Hasanan does a lot of, lot of hair transplant. <laughs> so, okay. We'll take a little, few seconds break and go to nail and then we are kind of done with this part. Do you all try to use dermoscopy on nails or no? First so start using it, it'll help with few things. Like scalp is excellent, we already talked. And moles, we know it helps, and now we go to nails slowly. So here is a nail, and it has some pigmentation, which is irregular. What do you want to do? Biopsy. And biopsy based on the formula still remain the same, which we did in, in moles, which is like multiple colors, irregular pigmentation, it remains the same. So in this case, it has some uh, thin, thin lines, then some thick lines, and then it has at least two, three, four colors, so something is wrong, so we will biopsy it. So, so in this case, usually go with the lines, so lines with irregular thickness, color, and spacing. So usually that's probably not good or melanoma. <coughs> what, somebody said nail psoriasis, somebody said onychomycosis, what else? Lichen plan, I'm just throwing it out there. Or, <laughs> so, longitudinal reaching excessive, so trachonychia, which could be due to many things. You all know that term. How about this one? 
This is kind of diagnostic. Onychomycosis, somebody got it. Okay, let's see why onychomycosis. So, usually these are white yellow streaks and you can tell clinically on dermoscopy that this, I mean you can tell clinically but dermoscopy adds to that a little bit. I'm going to give this lecture to Shona and then she can share with you guys. Or actually there will be a link posted, he's going to do that. Um, how about this one? What do you want to do? It could be Sarashi, let's see. So pitting, I mean nail sarachis, you don't need a dermoscopy. How about this one? Onico papilloma, man, somebody smart. All right. So white band and splinter hemorrhages. So there are these hemorrhages, white band. You can have subungual keratosis if you see here under the nail pit. If you are not focusing here and you just look here, obviously this could be a ward, this could be SCC or whatever else. But then with this linear uh, hemorrhages and then this line, so it's onico papilloma. Uh, how about this one? Mm-hmm. So longitudinal fissures and fragmentation, little bit different than psoriasis, different than fungus, different than uh, other things we saw on the nail, so lichen planus. Now some test cases. <laughs> Just for fun's sake, what do you want to do with them? So are there some other Residents are other than BBH or B. Kush Lohan? Yes, PF hospital. PF hospital. Yeah. 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 And then PF. PF. Oh, okay. Good, good, good. Yeah, you should all take advantage of that, but I'm saying that sometime we'll discuss clinical cases. What happened is so we have a histology case we are signing, but we don't know what to do with it. Then, luckily, most of those cases I have clinical image. Then we'll go back and look at the clinical image and try to match. So it's kind of become CPC many times. So I suggest whoever is on on elective rotation, whoever is time, usually it's Friday morning, 8 a.m. New York time, which is usually 6 p.m. here, I think 5 or 6. So it's a good time. So if anybody wants to join, then we'll put you in the Zoom link. Yeah, I'll, I'll give an email in the end. You guys can, then we'll just one by one. And obviously it's free, so you join or not join, it's up to you. Okay. First of all, what do we do with this? Do we remove or not remove? I did not show you this case in my examples, but what do you guys want to do? Dr. Hiba, who is my new recruit, what do you want to do? Hmm? Not remove? Okay, good. So here you go. So this is called dermatofibroma. Every, you don't even need to do a dermoscopy, but on dermoscopy, if it's a well-established lesion, you'll see this central hypopigmented scar-like area surrounded by just network. But now no need to do anything. We have not seen this one before, but what do you guys want to do? Remove it, so it's a capacity sarcoma. It's called a rainbow pattern. You probably will never see one, but if you see, obviously, clinically you can guess, but just to let you know, this pattern is called rainbow pattern. How about this one? A vascular lesion. Biogenic granuloma. A biogenic granuloma can be very irritated, but usually this is all look like on dermoscopy. These white colorate, you know, pyogenic granuloma still have epidermis in the edges, so this white colorate comes from that, and it makes it easy if you look at 
this line here. Many adnexal tumors can also do like acrine poroma, this, but this is a pyogenic granuloma. Usually in histology, if you remember, it has a very thin epidermis and then blood inflamed blood vessels. How about this one? You see it, I think, every single day. Many of them in every clinic. No need to biopsy, but what do you think is this? It's, it's actually easier clinically, but anyway, molluscum. <laughs> okay. It's easy, but this is how it looks. Because on, you see these little dots clinically also, but on dermoscopy they become more pronounced, and you know, these are uh, multilobular white areas, basically. Sometimes it's it helps because folliculitis versus molluscum versus this, sometimes you'll be able to help. Sorry? Usually, no, but in, in dermoscopy, you see it clearly. Ward, no, a molluscum, usually less, less than ward, but there are blood vessels, but not a feature of it because wo molluscum is so prominent that in histology mein you never think of vessels. This is the pyogenic granuloma. It's so much vasculature. This is the key page. Okay, easy. Ward. Okay. <laughs> finger-like projections. So, how about this one? Anybody wants to guess? Kya karna iska? Kya diagnosis hai? <laughs> but I mean, now you can tell ke oh, they scale tha, but it's good to, good to like. So, it's got the, the rim, you know, clinically, you know, this rim, this one, poro, these are those DSAP probably disseminated actinic, but poro, it's clear on this. Okay. Anybody wants to shout out the diagnosis? Scalp face, probably scalp face somewhere. So, your lichen planus pigmentosis. Uh, some of actually a Fox class fellow, I cannot name for confidentiality, he showed up, uh, he, I have not seen him for 45 years or something, and he was in uh, um, New Jersey with his kids. He contacted me through many people he knew uh, with a lesion on his face which is irregularly pigmented, possible melanoma. Uh, but on dermoscopy, we knew it's not, and I did a biopsy, it came back as lichen planus pigmentosis. So I, I have the biopsy on this region. It looks like lentigo malignant type melanoma, but in our skin, on the face, somebody who's not sun exposed for 30 years, usually it's not melanoma. Okay, there is a part two coming, which is more about AI extra. Uh, but we take few minutes break. Yes, shoot some questions. Some excellent pictures about the nails. Uh, but can you show nail fold, it's a particular examination with the dermoscopy? Yes, I do all the time for lupus extra. They become really, 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 <laughs> dermatomyositis, lupus, they become very prominent and very easily visible. Yeah, that's an excellent point, yeah. Actually, I didn't include nail lupus. So any other questions related to dermoscopy? So, Dermoscopy now I call stethoscope of dermatology. If you don't have it with you, then some you probably should have it. Get get a Chinese model, get something from wherever because the American model is really expensive. They range from 500 to 800 to whatever dollars. But there must be some Chinese. There are so same thing. Just get something. Have it in your pocket and then you appear smarter. Is there polarized or non-polarized? There is for basal cell. We, yeah, there are. There is a kind where you have polarized, non-polarized, so that you can look at basal. So some lesion you want to see deeper, others you want to see more surface, so it helps with basal cell measurement. Necessary to have both of them. Yeah, yeah. I, no, one scope has two settings. Jo uski hai na, derm light wallon ki, they have two settings. You can do polarized or non-polarized.
बट इन्फ्लेमेशन में वो ऑब्वियसली विल हेल्प अ लॉट हील में समटाइम्स हीमाटोमा को जरा डिफरेंशिएट करना मुश्किल हो जाता है सो हीम हां सो ने यूजुअली यू कैन टेल के इट्स फ्रॉम द वेयर द लीजन इज एंडिंग सो इट्स लाइक इररेगुलर क्लाउडी सी सिचुएशन होती है एंड इट्स अ वन ब्लॉब यू डू यू नो दैट इज बट इट कैन बिकम डिफिकल्ट जो थोड़ी नीडल डाल के ब्लड निकाल कर स्प्रेड कर नहीं मैं तो थोड़ा सा कर शामी वेरी शामी शामी आफ्टर वी फिनिश दिस पार्ट वुड इट बी पॉसिबल दैट यू पुल वन ऑफ पलवींस केसेस वी साइंड लास्ट वीक और वी हैव टू साइन एंड वी कैन शो फ्रॉम देयर नो फ्रॉम विल पुल योर ईमेल ऑन द लैपटॉप नो या या बट लेट मी फिनिश सो शामी इज माय फेलो He was in state. Now he's here for a couple months finishing yes. the project. Rao, ji. Ek is mein bulaya hua tha. Yeah, but wo yeah, bro, business. Mo, so, yeah, yeah. Wo aaye hua hai. Sir bhi hai. Like, toh dekh lenge. Yahan par ek dikha ja sakta hai. Live hai mere par. Better hoga yes. If it's okay, then yeah, why not? Bulaa le. Saath hi better hoga. Wo bada aaye ho to dilgit. To udhar ja ke dekhna padega. Saath better hoga. तो लेट मी फिनिश दिस स्टाफ देन वी डू अब क्या उसको देखना है तो पहले देख लेते इट्स अप टू यू कुछ भी नहीं कुछ भी नहीं ओके सो वी गो टू द सेकंड पार्ट इन इन दिस एडवांसमेंट आई एम मोस्टली टॉकिंग अबाउट के डायग्नोस्टिकली एंड ट्रीटमेंट वाइज व्हाट इज हैपनिंग इन रिलेटेड टू स्किन कैंसर नॉट लाइक एवरीथिंग सोराइसिस एक्स्ट्रा एंड मोस्टली एआई एंड अदर स्टाफ सो अ next thing is that due to covid and before covid everybody was talking about telemedicine but i started now calling it that telemedicine is medicine it's up to your choice ke aapne usko patient ko in person dekhna hai khaas taur pe skin wale aur aapne digitally dekhna hai so that's a normal routine now and it used to be ke telemedicine ke liye you will need special setup no any camera zoom whatsapp whatever you have you can do telemedicine so uh in united states almost everybody offers tele now almost everybody so when patient calls my website rodermetology.com they have a choice you want to be seen in person or digitally so and they pick can you see so almost everybody does it uh and this discussion ke tally hoti hai theek hoti hai is it useful is it not that discussion is over we i i just say just do it now it's not a choice ke aapne tally karni hai ke nahi karni hai because covid will come and go but it will continue ke log patients many of them really somebody has a wound leg wound she is 90 year old she cannot walk wheelchair mein dal ke doctor ke daftar mein two attendants it's just not worth it you have a little tally there uska wound dekh ke and prescribe whatever you want to prescribe so uh i myself in last two years seen over like 4000 on tally visits i do tally dermatology for all california inmates mean prisons so i see them on tally if they need procedure then they come to my california offices but i see all of them and they save a lot of money and trouble because they are all like you know uh, in difficult situation prisoner wise but they have to have like a special guard three guards a bus special this this so not traveling to doctor's office just seeing them on tele is obviously solving a lot of medical issues for them uh, so if you don't use it get used to it patient will start asking ke can we see you from home especially skin folks i don't know you can you do procedures but skin wale they would at least follow up you can do on tally yeah so but as you all know the tally has two types we call store and forward and live and store and forward mean you take the photo you send it to the consultant then on their own time they can give you the diagnosis and send it back to you that uske advantage is that he doesn't he or she doesn't have to be available right then and there and also when you seeing a patient on tally many times unka camera is not working lot light is not good or they just not working so you cannot really see the lesion so if they do take a photo send it to you then you see the right lesion so it has its own advantages disadvantages then you cannot ask 
questions you want to ask at that time. Uh, so then most people do like uh, live, which is a live tally. And in the far that I now Zoom has a HIPAA, I mean a, a, a plan for doctors. They can pay nineteen twenty dollar per account, and it's secure and legally all safe. You can have a Zoom meeting between you and patient and maybe your assistant who's writing the notes. So three people can be on Zoom and do the tally. Or you can use WhatsApp. I don't know WhatsApp, it's secure. Or you can use, many people use FaceTime. So do use whatever you have to use, but you don't need a special service to do tally. But there are two types, store and forward and live. Uh, then uh, where can you use it? Obviously you can use it as a consultation that Kadus as a patient, he want to send it to General Saab, like, what do I do? Rather than sending the patient, you can do tally. And then many of those patients, like you are busy in OPD, everybody doesn't need to come to BBH OPD, 900 of them. Maybe some of them can be seen by tally and less crowd in the hospital. And then obviously, uh, direct care, you can see a psoriasis patient is doing fine. You can tell them to continue trimcinolone, whatever. And then for follow-up, if it's a wound care surgery, you don't really need to bring them back. You can see them tally. So these are like where you can use them. Uh, so now there are many, many apps on, on the web where they can be used for uh, making diagnosis or teaching, but there is some many apps. I'm just quoting some called Skin Vision, which is a app you can download to diagnose melanoma. There is an app called uh, First Drum Store and Forward Consultation Service, Air Health Conflict of Interest. That's I'm involved with that company. We have telehealth and all that stuff in it. But there are many. Then, uh, so thinking that tally karni hai, ke nahi karni, and that time is over. You basically have a, have a service for your patients. And and honestly, there are now two or three companies in Pakistan. One is called Sehat Kahani which was started by two doctors, lady doctors in Karachi, and they are now almost covering 30% of the country. So some of you who have energy may be able to attract a lot of patients by doing just tele. Shifa for you. Yeah, Shifa for you, which is friend of mine, Vakas, he was doing that. But there are many, you don't really <coughs> need a special service. Just advertise, rather than advertising the tele company, you brand yourself. I provide tally. Which service you use is secondary issue. That's car that's different. But you say, I'm the driver. And one of you or some of you take up, do tally and help people and make a lot of money. So next, so tally is happening. No need to talk about it. Now we go into a little bit into non-invasive diagnostics, which obviously dermoscope is one of them because we are adding that. And then there are Many others, but two of them are really widely used now in at least Europe and states, uh, OCT and confocal microscopy. And uh, OCT, basically uh, low power laser light, like uh, which can see up to like a few millimeters of skin. It's similar to ultrasound. And then, uh, have, but resolution is like uh, higher than, than ultrasound. So here is an image of an OCT, which is uh, you are seeing on the as compared to histology on the right. Here you see this is the epidermis, and then uh, this is the dermoepidermal junction, and the, so you can basically tell epidermis dermis. The current OCT cannot give you cellular details. If you want to see basal cell or squamous cell, it's difficult. But you can just see ke where it ends the other basal cell, so you can tell ke it's basal cell, how deep you have to cut. Uh, we, my, one of our, me and our fellow, we are working with another uh, institute in Jersey where we are trying to uh, design a pen which will, which you basically go around the lesion and it will be where the lesion ends. So other basal cell, or squamous cell, or scum margin, you want to cut, so how much to cut, it can define lesion. So it's not available yet, we are, it's our model number three, uh, we are cleaning, but eventually I want to have a pen, ke basal cell, to draw, karke, you cut it out. So 
using OCT, there is a lot of research in the world. Uh, as I said, this resolution is not so good. Then uh, the thing which I love and I have the most cases in the United States of confocal microscopy, so we use it every day. Uh, basically, uh, it's a laser source again, and it, uh, re it relies on the reflectance, like the, how much uh, light is back scattered. Uh, and depending how much, what is the refraction index of a cell, meaning uh, melanin versus fibroblast versus this, they will look either dark or opaque, like x-rays. So based on that, we can tell melanoma versus, it's a melanocyte versus a keratinocyte versus others. The depth of penetration, most of confocal scope, they only go up to 300 micron, which is mean papillary dermis. If something is deeper than that, you cannot see it well. And it's a laser, as I said earlier, that's how you work. So generally, uh, the way it works is like you, uh, Basically, this is biopsy, this is the clinical lesion, and this is confocal. So, in this then, clearly you can see certain structures there, which is one of them, we also see this, this dot here. And then this confocal, usually histology sections, let me go back, are vertical, meaning epidermis to dermis going this way. In... Uh, Confocal, you look at them horizontally. Okay, instead of cutting this way, you're cutting this way. And these areas are dermoepidermal junction, basically, and this black area is dermis. So then, whatever you see in this area, that's how you uh, base your diagnosis. I'm not trying to teach confocal, but just giving you a concept here. So for example, here is a lesion uh, clinically, and here is a confocal on it. And you can see certain features to tell it's benign or not benign. So uh, currently, it is used for diagnosing melanoma and sensitivity specificity for melanoma is well established. It has a criteria. Similarly, basal cell, squamous cell, uh, you can diagnose. Uh, diagnosing inflammatory lesions, psoriasis, dermatitis, eczema, you can separate like we did dermoscopy. <laughs> And uh, really the good use which is now coming out is like when you're doing your cosmetic treatment or biologic or any treatment, you can see how the disease is progressing without biopsy. You can do dermoscopy to see epidermis has thinned, you have more collagen, you have more blood vessel, etc. So laser wale, a uh, lot of people are doing studies on laser, microneedling, etc., etc., and using confocal because if you want to plan a study on an aesthetic product, uh, uh, product on the face who wants to do 30 biopsies. So you can do confocal back and forth whole day if you like. Uh, me and my another fellow, we are working on where uh, on inflammation where we want to uh, catch Langerhans cells. So Langerhans cells are dendritic cells, you all know they live in the epidermis, dermis, but under inflammations for a short while they come out like little, little, like uh, shrimps like that, and then they deal with the antigen, take the antigen back to lymph, uh, lymph node, that stuff. But we're trying to uh, fish them using confocal, and then once we fish them, we have found them, then we, we are trying to treat them to see what happens to them. But the point being is there is a lot of research and a lot of uh, uh, grants around that available. We just got three grants on doing treatment monitoring of psoriasis and dermatitis using confocal where they're using biologics or new those jacks and all that. So a lot of, lot of uh, research and funding in this treatment monitoring using confocal for inflammations. So uh, limitation, as I said, the depth of penetration is very low up to, if it's deeper, you cannot see. And obviously you need uh, training if you are trying to diagnose uh, these lesions. Also, when I sign my pathology, at the same time, Friday, we also sign confocal. So you'll see some cases if you are joining that meeting. Uh, so now let's go to a little more research story where all this histology and confocal, etc., where they may be going. So.
So Shami here, Shami just wave your hand. Shami is working on this project. He's graduated from Shifa like a year ago. And uh, he is uh, uh, working on this project with us. Uh, it's a combined project with Nust and uh, me in New York. Uh, we're working on it. So the story is like, when you have histology slides, usually you will have to obviously cut it and stain it, and then send it to somebody to diagnose it. What we are working on, many people are working on, what we are kind of like to try to create that stained slide digitally without staining. So artificial intelligence picks on those colors and somehow produces the same color without using any dyes. So we call it pseudo staining. Advantage is HNE, showing HNE may not be difficult, but the advantage is we want to then go to immunostain. If you have S100, S, SM45, P53, extra different stain to diagnose this from that, those stains, first of all, are not available even in every lab in America. But here, obviously, not very difficult, expensive to do. But if you can stain them uh, digitally, then we may be able to cut the cost and may be available, obviously, if, you, if we succeed, then we can do it here, like you send your slide and we, you can, okay, give me, give me a pseudo S100 stain. So we should be able to do that. But we just got started. We have already produced, uh, we can, like this is a, basically a unstained slide. This is a stained slide, uh, stained uh, basically digitally. Uh, if you look at, this is a, uh, a tumor. But you can see these stains are produced digitally. So we succeeded to the first step. Uh, the next steps will be like uh, basically, as I was talking, to do immunostaining uh, and then generate. The next step will be if somebody wanted a project for their MD thesis. So if theoretically, if you can do digital staining without staining, then that means you are already coloring different cells in different colors. So if so, then I think the machine also knows which cell is what. So that means then we technically can also diagnose digitally without human. So the next step would be once we have enough cases, there are some studies already there doing breast and thyroid, but we'll move on to next one where we want to do basal cell squamous cell melanoma, uh, basically with the machine, and then obviously doctor can confirm or not. So. These are just steps. First, we collect the data, stain them, or, and then ask the computer to diagnose them. But we have to write a lot of algorithms. So I have some volunteers. They'll be helping. But uh, I think that will be the next thing to do. And if we produce that from uh, you know, Pakistan, Rawal Pindi, that'll be even cooler if we succeed before some bigger institutes like uh, Stanford, et cetera. I have a project with Stanford. It's a good thing for us. <laughs> which I've been working with them for two years, COVID ho gaya, yo gaya, wo gaya, but we really have not made a progress. Uh, we're doing confocal uh, diagnosis by artificial intelligence, that's the project, but it's not moved a lot. I, with NUST, I think we started Shami what, three months ago, and we have our first sample. So I think the reason is like teams like NUST, there are many teams, I'm not advertising NUST, but there are many places within who can help you if you have the idea and they want doctors or people who want help and uh, they are very <coughs> smart you know intelligent software engineers which, sitting there. Which department of NAST is? Uh, we are doing with the uh, computer sciences Shami what is with this one? It's uh, I think the main NAST behind that there is another college like engineering ka yes. Usme. so we are working with the brilliant three guys and they are helping us. So if any of you want to do research, let us know. We'll give you a lot of work. Uh, then my, my, this is my very good calculated guess. In near future, like five to ten years, most skin diagnosis can be made remotely. We already can do that. But we can do it digitally. Then non-invasive techniques like I'm talking confocal, there'll be few more coming. People will use that before doing the biopsy in at least in advanced world. Okay, who wants to get cut if you don't need to cut? So digital, if you can tell, you can tell. <coughs> if you don't cut them. 
के ए फेस पे इज लाइक दिस बिग और स्क्वेर मिस और दिस सो देन वट यू डू डू यू वेट लाइक लेट दो ट्यूमर्स ग्रो और यू कट इट सम हाउ सो माई गट फीलिंग इज देर बी अ रिमोट सर्जरी लाइक दे डू फॉर सम रिमोट सर्जरीज नाउ बट देर इन द नेक्स्ट रूम बट आइडिया इज यू कैन डू इट फ्रॉम न्यू यॉर्क टू लाहौर डिजिटली बायोपसी एक्सीजन विल हैपन वी आर देर आर सम कंपनी इन कोरिया देर इट सम वर्क देर इज ए गाय इन लाहौर आई एम वर्किंग विद यू वी मे बी एबल टू हैव ए लिल टूल विच goes and biopsy or excise and then stitch it or burn it i think robotic surgery would be hmm robotic surgery would be an idea yes to robot at the remote area no that's what i'm saying so like hard to reach areas pandemics and you need surgeries then it should be possible so i think within these 5 to 10 years time there will be there is already a robot for hair transplant you know that but you have to stand there but there are robotic surgeries like some people there is a laser machine that you can control from wherever and you can do some lasers but i'm talking about biopsy and excision for skin cancer i think that will happen and uh, if anybody is interested let me know we have a project with lahore uh, university jo hai narowal mein uat whatever they call it they have a robotic department so they are working on a prototype so we'll see so uh anyway so lot of uh, chances for people who are interested in derm uh, and lot of chances people who wants to do research not just write papers but lot of things for people who want to write papers so uh my email is babarrao at gmail so if you cannot memorize then i'm sorry but it's b a b a r r a o at gmail dot com otherwise dr shwana and dr bhat here they'll find me or go to google you'll find me so if anybody interested let me know obviously we cannot entertain everybody but if we see that i call it you have the juice then we will juice it out <laughs> so but i have many people working in many places and they all have their projects so contact if you want to i think we should do question answers or see your patient there's some blog okay okay <coughs> Sorry, it was not a very <coughs> organized lecture, but I think lectures have become boring because anybody can pull a lecture from PowerPoint from Google and talk about it. So it's good to talk about your cases. Yeah. Sir, it was a very informative and interactive lecture. We learned a lot from you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. ये डिजिटल इम्यूनो स्क्रीनिंग पॉसिबल होगी वैसे जो है सो एम आई टी वालों ने कर ली दे हैव डन द फर्स्ट सैंपल एंड वी आर फॉलोइंग द सिमिलर ट्रैक आई थिंक इल बी वेरी पॉसिबल क्योंकि कलरिंग है ना वो बट वंस कंप्यूटर नोज देन कंप्यूटर नोज ये कर नहीं सकते आइडिया ये है कि नहीं नहीं सो यू विल हैव द बायोप्सी ऑफ कोर्स बायोप्सी के बाद वैसे तो नहीं कर सकते यू विल हैव ए बायोप्सी एंड यू डिड योर एच एन ई एंड नो यू वॉन्ट अम्यूनो स्टेन अब लैब नहीं है वो इतनी सारी स्टेने आई हैं और दे आर नॉट अफोर्डेबल देन आई एम नॉट सेंग इट विल बी डन ऑल फाइव हंड्रेड स्टेन बट बेसिक स्टेन में बी यू कैन डू इट दे आर एडी डिड द पेपर दैट सॉ वी वी आई हैव रेफरेंस इफ यू वॉन्ट so they did i think hmb 45 s100 some keratins they did that yeah. but i am not saying that, that will change the practice but it will add to whatever else we do basically my 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 young fellow in california who works in the lab i said palveen look i can beat ai i saw diagnose a case in 5 second boom 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 
She said, yeah, Dr. Robert, you'll get tired by 5 a.m. and jittery because you didn't have lunch. Computer will not. <laughs> so, so we have our limitations. You just need to buy more memory. <laughs> yeah, but um, it's not like it will rape, replace humans or anything, but I think it'll just a add to whatever we do if you use those tools. So it's like... Exactly, exactly. So that's, that's why I got attracted to... Okay, many people don't have immunostain, so if we can do it, we do it. And with the... With the Confocal at they have already have algorithms, they are diagnosing few things. Or histology, if they have done breast and thyroid, there is an, uh, you put a, in a scanner your slide, in the evening it throws out adenocarcinoma or not. That they already did. That's artificial intelligence. Because, but you have to teach them, like Abhi, if we did this project, basal cell, squamous cell, ka, then me or somebody like Shami, we have to sit down and define ke what is what are the features so annotate kar, annotate karna padega na? so then computer doesn't know once it knows then it'll pick on its own but first we have to define many 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 specimens yeah So for FCPS or MD, MD ki to requirement hoti hai, but do they have to do thesis for FCFA also? They have both. They have dissertation. Dissertation, G -G. Both of them. Or MCPS ki ni hoti. Yeah. yeah. So mostly use. One of actually, it was your, your fellow who uh, got... Uh, uh, she was she won the first presenter or something in one of international meeting. Yeah, in uh, yeah. So what do I do for our Rahul Pindi, jo BBH ka drum department? I work with them, and they research wise then. Achha. And then you do your yeah. That's good. We do it with the clinical along with the suprological features and most of the cases we uh, sign it like uh, this for mutual understanding that it is lichen planus and it is psoriasis or whatever it is, autism or lesion. But at time um, we uh, some difficulty like clinical doesn't match with the histological features. So in that case <clears throat> we give a sort of a descriptive report and we can also offer some sort of stain if some staining, special stains are required. Or <coughs> we refer the case for immunohistochemistry. And we also discuss with you some of the cases. Yeah, some of them, yeah. What did you do with FCPS? FCPS Yeah, maybe you should join our sign out so you'll see more skin. Exactly. Inshallah, I will give you a question. There's a lot of cancer hota bhi, but I've usually like not my cases, but we diagnose like 60, 70 skin cancers a day. And so, I noticed that even for melanocytic lesion, we don't see so much of melanomas, especially in EY. I have just, uh, I have rarely seen some spits in EY or dysplastic in my practice. I have seen them in Shaukat Khanam and some of them in AFIP. We don't uh, usually see these nevas and they are very confusing. Especially mm. even on histology, dysplastic nevus and some uh, blue nevus, cellular, they, they at time they they are really challenging. But um, <coughs> since they, I don't know why they're not patients. Thing, are they? We don't see much. Well, that's good. You don't have melanoma. Yes. Well, actually, the probably because the it's rare. We have prevalence is low. Prevalence yeah, is low. Yeah. Uh, that's the yeah. 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 <laughs> okay. We finished on time. This is how you know the stuff cut at the end of the phone. Yes. It's a video card, it is honor. What's up, Council? I'm hungry now. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 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 <laughs>
हम लेक्चर तो सुन ही रहे थे हम तो खाने का इंतजार कर रहे मैं सर एक चीज़ ना बोल जाऊँ आपने हमें ये प्रोग्राम दे दें आपको क्रेडिट आर्ट दे देंगे सौ के मिल जाएंगे सब तो मिल जाएंगे हमारे वन ट्वेंटी की होगी वर्कशॉप सिर्फ क्रेडिट आर्ट दी हम तो ओके सो दिस विल जी Thank you very much, and uh, I'm particularly thankful to all of you for inviting me also here. And uh, believe me, it was very informative, and I personally learned uh, because uh, uh, this dermatoscopy uh, uh, and confocal microscopy are relatively new. Uh, they were not there when we were in training, so uh, it was very informative learning experience coming here. And especially, I'm really impressed by the. Upcoming digital scanning, which you have <laughs> talked about, uh, look forward to that because that's going to provide a great help to uh, people like us in the developing countries, <coughs> where we we really have a dearth of uh, you know the scanning, uh, histopathology, and uh, immuno scanning uh, particularly. So it was very informative. I think uh, really thoroughly enjoyed it. And we look forward to listening you more in the future also. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sir, please. 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 तो मैंने कहा जी तकरीर कर रहे हैं कहा जी तकरीर ये है कि खाना खोलो <laughs> बल्कि खाना नहीं होगा रोटी खोलो <laughs> रोटी खोलो तो मेरा कहा कि रोटी खोलो इसलिए बेहतर है सर को एक शील अब देना चाह रहे हैं सर डेमोटोलॉजी डिपार्टमेंट सर की हमारी डिपार्टमेंट की बड़ी सर्विस है Sir, privilege is all mine. It is a great pleasure, uh, and uh, you know, आपको प्रेजेंट करना चाहिए. Thank you, thank you, everybody. Thank you very much. Thank you.